Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Token Druid. This time a full cost version of Token Druid. I played a budget version of this deck earlier and I wanted to try out what it would be like to play the full cost version with some lessons learned from the budget build. So in particular there is one card that I think should be core in Token Druid but currently isn't and that is Bees. Choose a minion, summon 411 beast that attack it. I had great success playing with this in the budget list and that translated really well to the full cost list as well. It gives the deck a little bit of more proactivity, so you have a chance to remove some minions, you have a chance to develop some boards. One of the most funny things I've done with beasts is like use that to kill a doomsayer and then you end up with those 411s on the board. So. The deck overall doesn't have a lot of ways to respond to things, it doesn't have a lot of reactive tools, it's like mulch muncher and that's it. Other than that you just try to build the board all the time. But if your board gets swiped then there's not really much that you can do. The main answer is of course to keep rebuilding the board every turn, because between buffs and savage roar, whenever you have a board, you're threatening lethal. So the opponent usually has to trade into your board, because if they just let you have a white board, they can die at any point. But sometimes the opponent is able to apply pressure, and you don't have enough time. If you just put stuff on the board, then the opponent will kill you. And in those cases, typically it's just a mulch muncher. If you have had enough treants on the board, so that mulch muncher is cheap, then mulch muncher removes stuff, and that enables you to swing the game back. But in this version, there's also bees, so you have some more responsiveness in the early game, so that you can also start building that board early on. Other than that, it is tree and token red business as usual. There are lots of tree and synergies in this deck. There is Goro the Might Tree, Taunt, Battlecry for the rest of the game. Your tree and have plus one, plus one. So you really, really want to summon a lot of tree ends when you play this deck. Those tree ends can be empowered by Goro. When they die, they empower the Mulch Muncher. When they're on the board, they make Aeroponics cheaper. One of the nice things you can do, for example, is Force of Nature Aeroponics. Force of Nature makes Aeroponics cost zero, then you can draw with that. And then that Force of Nature 5 mana spell makes Anubis Defender cost zero, so then you can play that. And it's just quite nice swing possibilities. Then there's like Landscaping Coin Aeroponics, Garden Gnome Coin Aeroponics. And of course, if you have any treants that stick on the board, then using Aeroponics is even easier. So for the most part it's just tree ends, tree and synergies, build boards, threat and lethal, win games. As for the mulligans with this deck, you really have to focus on your early game. Tree enforcements, shrubadier, acorn bearer, landscaping. You want to get one, two, three on the board very quickly and just start that pressure going right from there. A mistake that I have sometimes made when playing this deck has been to keep a little bit of a too greedy mulligan, because when you get like Garden Gnome and Force of Nature or Garden Gnome and Forest Sage, sometimes you feel like, okay, I would like to keep this, then I can get this big turn on four. But usually that is not correct. Garden Gnome can be a good keep if you have some early game already, then okay. I know that I can get on the board, and then I can have the big turn on 4 after I already have something before. Yeah, that works. But you have to find some of these early game cards in every single matchup. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and check out the description for my Twitch channel and other ways to support the content that I create. And now, let's go take a look at B Token Druid in action. Yep, we've got a Shrubadier. That's a good start. On the play, so... Blessing of Ancients. Just threw you back in the deck. Now you're here again. And Hunter's got... Oh no, it's going to be the Face Stalker, isn't it? Yep. I figured that would be it. This is going to be a this is going to be a difficult game. <laughs> Two face talkers. So much face talking. Oh dear. This is going to get tricky. Probably me. 
need to kill one of these. That one can just go face. Now he will get to hero power. Gets the first secret out. Is he using scale rider instead? Not a bad move because I have nothing, unless I can top deck that. That's good. Alright, that's a start. We can work with this. Still no hero powers. Okay. That was an interesting move. So many options for me. I think I need to use the force of nature, right? And then just hit into the face stalker so that I prevent him from getting any secrets out. Unless he has the secrets already in hand. That's possible. But I still think it has to be the force of nature here. Then the free aeroponics. I'm trading that away so that he can't draw and play secrets for free. That has to be prevented at least. If I end up in a position where like Mulch Muncher is the only minion on the board, then there's always just Rotness Drake. Same with Goru, of course. So I expect him to use something like Corrosive Breath or maybe a Something like that, to clean up this board here. Oh, I did expect him to clean up the whole board. I wanted the fell wing, fine. Okay, that's fine. Do I now have to use a mulch muncher? I mean, I could even get both of them out there. If I trade this off, this would cost three. How curious. Then I could also get the acorn bearer. Let's see what the dendrologist gives me first. Yeah. What the expedition or healing touch? I might need a healing touch to stay in this game longer. That's the question whether I trade off this tree and Stand the time run low. Probably not. Just get the Mulch Muncher out there. Trade away his dragon. That one to the face. Because you can always just use Frenzied Fellwing to trade away the Mulch Muncher if he likes. That remains an option for him. So that's why I don't like. Oh, he wants to face tank 8. Oh boy. He is not afraid. So now this one trades there. And then the Mulch Muncher will cost 3. So then I can get the Garden Gnome and the Mulch Muncher on the same turn. I kind of like that. That one trades there. I get the Garden Gnome out there. I get another Mulch Muncher out there. I kill another Dragon. Now Rotness Drake can no longer reliably clear this. He face tanks that and he's dead. Nice. Alright. We take down the Hunter. That's cool. No, I, I'd rather kill the mage before mage stabilizes. But even now that I, now that it's been said that it's Outland, I still don't see how it's Outland. Doesn't look like that to me. I guess this is Acorn Bearer. Or it could also be tree enforcements. This will cost tree when there's a tree end. I suppose it's the Acorn Bearer. I don't think this is the way it has to go. Then I can play a Squirrel and a Tree Ant, maybe. Next turn, this is going to get pinged. Oh. 
And this turn I'm going to play a squirrel and a treant. Now if this treant dies, I don't get to aeroponics. It's unlikely that it would die, but it's possible. So, I could kill the Doomsayer, but it would cost me a lot. Because I would have to use Savage Roar to do it. I guess this is just an Aeroponics turn. Go face and let the Doomsayer go off. But on the other hand, killing the Doomsayer was an option. I just didn't quite have... Quite have a lot of stuff on the board. Oh no, that enables Reno next turn. And Reno can then kill... Yeah. I still have to play the Gnome. But now, if there's a Reno in hand, and there's two cards left that were kept, then this is perfect. If I had killed the Doomsayer, I would have still been in the exact same position. It would have made no difference whatsoever. From the point of view of Reno potentially coming out. That going face means that it's Reno. Yeah. This mage is actually going to win. I can't let the mage get to 7 mana next turn, right? Can I? Maybe I can. Get the force of nature out there. Maybe this is still fine. Because then the mulch munchers will be heavily discounted. Pocket galaxy. Oh boy. If I spent the coin, I could get the mulch muncher out there. And kill both minions. Then I can't coin Forest Satan next turn. I really want to coin Forest Satan next turn. No, I can do it all with, by sacrificing the tree and. Yeah, this works out. This one goes there. And then I can beast the Reno. And I can mulch muncher the. Mulch Muncher the Mana Saber. So this enables me to prevent the mage from getting to 8, but he did get the Pocket Galaxy. So... Who knows what, what's gonna happen now. It can be used to kill the... It still has got to be like this. Winning the forest aid. That's still the way it has to be. Then mage needs a freeze. Only six cards in hand. Needs to be freeze or blizzard or something like that. Okay. Roughly 25-20% to discover the right type of spell. Managed to get that discover. That's pretty sweet. Do I kill this now and put another forest seed on the board? That's an option. I think that's the best I can do here. Trade that away. Get another 5 2 2s out there. Do I also play the Mulch Muncher? What can he do if I play the Mulch Muncher? He could have freeze effect. He can't play the He can't play the Reno yet. I think I need this Mulch Muncher out there too. It fills my board. But I already saw the Doomsayer. This means that even if he can kill some some of the smaller stuff. It won't be enough. Oh, now he can kill a Mulch Muncher. Then 
10, 12, 14, 16. 16 plus 12. Yeah, that's lethal. Oh wow. So right move with the Mulch Muncher play there. Because Reno, the, the amazing Reno was not playable yet. I need my early game minions. There were lots of nice support cards there. But they are not, not enough without, without other stuff. Our neck of the woods. So Rogue kept two cards, but this one is of course just going to dagger down. There's never a reason to spend valuable resources on that one. I'll play some squirrels so that I can do landscaping into coin aeroponics next turn. Because I want to ensure that I will get that card draw. I'll get the card draw. Okay. Got something. But I have a beast to answer something here. Potentially. Hmm, Dendrologist can discover a spell because a tree ant was left alive. That's good too. I guess it's got to be the inner rate, right? And at these songs, I think it has to be the inner rate here. Not inner rating this turn, of course. This turn is just these minions out there. But this allows me to like play Force of Nature into inner rate Goro. Potentially. Oh dear, this one's going to be a big Ed this one's going to be the big Edwin turn. Big Edwin is the only way Rogue can win this matchup. But here it comes. It's a huge Edwin. No, Soul of the Forest is a bad card, you shouldn't run that. Because it doesn't really help you. Okay, it's going to be a gigantic Edwin. A 14 14. A 14, 16 with taunt. That is not bad. Okay, can I kill it? I'll push it down to 14, 14. Next turn I can do bees and savage roar. Six plus six. I will be your death. You will be squelched. Is it better to have the garden gnome or the force of nature? I guess the garden gnome is better. Come with that one. Play the garden gnome. Play a squirrel. Don't to innervate a squirrel. Yeah, I do. But the rogue can probably. We'll see. So much depends on how many minions rogue can kill now. Well, that those three cards are pretty good, though. So, Savage Roar. Four. That's enough to kill the Edwin. Can I kill both of these? If I do Blessing of the Ancient Savage Roar, 5 plus 5 plus 4 and 5. I can kill both of these, but the Rogue will get 3 free cards next turn, which is kind of a problem. But I guess that's the best I can do here. Savage Roar. So that I can deal 
5 and 5 and 4 to the Edwin and 5 to the Togwaggle and 2 to the face. But I'm afraid that the 3 free cards will give Rogue sufficient tempo to win this game. Yeah. Lots of stuff coming right up. So I can do like Force of Nature. Rook can easily deal with the Force of Nature though. I probably have to play Goro. I might die. Oh, that's always a possibility. Now Rook must not have an answer to Goro, but I think they will. I mean, seven cards in hand. Two of them are free. So. It's an answer to Goro, and then I will die. But I mean, that 14 14 Edwin. That is the only way for the rogue to win. And he got exactly that. And that's pretty good. Yeah. And then those are quick. And then there will be lethal. 6, 7, 8. He only needs 3 from hand, so. Lethal is almost guaranteed. I could make him need 7 from hand. If I be is the flick. I see both shadow steps, so flick is not going to go back to hand anymore. I mean, I guess three treants is just not going to cut it now, is it? Could get four minions out there. How curious. Maybe I need to try that. Now, now I did it wrong. I can't even beast the well, I needed to beast the flick first. Yeah. Then he would have needed 7 from hand instead of 3. No, 6 from hand. Leroy would still have been lethal. But it would have removed the Abyss right out. So many or that out. Yeah, a bit of, a bit of a sloppy play there. I think I can keep this. I even keep the Mulch Muncher because I have four Treants coming with these. So the Mulch Muncher can help me if the Mage gets some, some kind of nutty draw. We'll see how good of a draw the Mage will get. Because Mage matchups are so much about luck. Let's see. Oh, that's a good one. Can't even be it down, so... The only thing I can do is go face. Why does every mage have a Doomsayer? I mean, there's only one in the deck. Well, we'll see, we'll see. The future is ours. I can't let him keep that, right? I think I can't let him keep that. Let's kill the Luna. I can't give him all that card draw. I can coin Force of Nature and Ubisoft Defender next turn. It might be too soon for the mage to answer. Tree time. Tree time. More held on the board than a Reno can clear. Blizzard would be useful for the mage, of course. Then I have to choose whether I use tree enforcement for plus two health. Or whether I use it for something else. Well, obviously if the mage managed to roll the flame ward. That's so good. If it's... If it's Spellbender. And I make it a 1-5 taunt. That's not good for me. Maybe it's okay. Not Spellbender. Hmm. 
<laughs> it was the flame wood. That's crazy. That was crazy. Because now I have 10 held on the board, so Reno answers this. If he has Reno, he wins. Is there a Reno? At least there is no Reno. That's a big deal. I'm not much sure to kill that so that Reno does not become an out. Twelve held on the board. Marino's still pretty good. Freezes are good too. So Mark of the Loa? Maybe yeah. We can currently kill this one. I guess it's okay. Buff up that one. Okay, what does the mage have next? He already high rolled a lot in this game. Can he high roll more? Looks like he can. I would like to push the date to the face. What if there's a conjurer's calling? Conjurer's calling on that, making more eight drops can be scary. And this one can be pinged away. Not enough mana to hero power and do things. I think I'll push the 8 to the face. Let's see what the mage has. I left myself open to Conjurer's Calling though. But there's no chance to value trade in addition. Well, that's going to be Rush and Wind Fury, right? Yep, that's what it looked like. Just try. Can the mage find Blizzard or the Flame Strike? Okay. Time for a random roll. What can the mage find? That's meaningless. That's meaningless. He needs to say yes. Whew. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.